so the stream just dropped dead like Stanley did in one of the endings. <laughs> So we are in serious back, work back. of art. I suppose I could write up a handful of gags to insert into the Stanley Parable, but the game is already such a densely layered web of profound philosophical insights that I can't even imagine where I'd have the room to stick them. I apologize, guys. Uh, I don't know why it just dropped dead, but it did. So yes, it back. Okay, let's see what this one says. While the idea for the game is good, for someone who prefers non-linear games, this preachiness gets annoying fast. Preachy? Stanley? I'm not preachy, am I? You can tell me if I'm preachy. Honestly, you can. Oh, goodness. This is actually quite shocking for me. I, I always, well, to be honest, I had always thought of the game's dialogue as being rather terse to begin with. You can't know how much fluff I cut from the game to get it to feel as light and airy as it... Well, I always thought it did, but maybe it wasn't. Oh dear. What an awful memory to have to hold on to. These black marks are my otherwise unimpeachable track record. I feel like a failure. Like I let these people down. Perhaps the Stanley Parable isn't quite as sterling as I always remembered. Mm-hmm. What's this one got to say? Do, 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 do. You constantly have to stop doing anything so the narrator can catch up with his long-winded explanations of what's happening. I wish there was a skip button. A skip button? Well, well, yes. Yes, I think we can do that. If I'm truly too preachy, then, then maybe letting you skip ahead for just a moment, surely it couldn't hurt. Not if it means we can strike these negative reviews from the record. Only positive reviews of the Stanley Parable. That's my motto today, and it's always been my motto. I'd do anything for the customer, Stanley. Yes, a skip button we shall have. And here it is. Go ahead and give it a shot. I'll pop you forward in time so that the second my incessant droning starts to bore you, with just the push of a button, you'll have zipped right past it. It's what the players have been asking for, and I'm very proud to have delivered. No more listening to me rambling on and on and on. No, 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 no. The Stanley Parable is a game for the people, and if the people want silence, then by goodness, that's what they're going to get. Well, don't sit around waiting for me to shut up. Go ahead and make me shut up. Here, we'll pretend that I've just begun an interminable monologue, and it goes something like this. The story, and the choices, or what have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably, we all until the end of time, at which time, everything all at once, so, now you see, blah, 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 uh, blah, 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 we've eaten too much and it can't be just yet, no, no, until yeah, 245, that the logic of elimination working backwards, the deduction, therefore, becomes impossible to manufacture went on for nearly 10,000 <laughs> years, until just yesterday, here and there, forward and back, and never a moment before lunchtime. It can't be. It's the only thing there is. How many billions left until so much more than forever ago? Which is why I say, the story and the choices, or what have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably, we all until the end of time, at which time everything all at once, so, now you oh, see, blah, 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 We've eaten too much and it can't be just yet, no, no, until 245, that the logic of elimination working backwards, the deduction therefore becomes impossible to manufacture. It went on for nearly 10,000 years, until just yesterday, here and there, forward and back, and never a moment before lunchtime. It can't be. It's the only thing there is. How many billions left until so much more than forever ago? Which is why I say... The story, and the choices, or what have you, well, and therefore, by becoming it is, I, yeah. so on and so forth, it until inevitably, we all until the end of time, at which time, everything all at once, so, now you see, blah, 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 we've eaten too much and it can't be just yet, no, no, until 245, that the logic of elimination working backwards, the deduction, therefore, becomes impossible to manufacture, it went on for nearly 10,000 years, 
until just yesterday, here and there, forward and back, and never a moment before lunchtime. It can't be. It's the only thing there is. How many billions left until so much more than forever ago? Which is why I say... The story, and the choices, or what have you, and therefore, by becoming it is, so on and so forth, until inevitably, we all until the end of time, at which time, everything all at once, so, now you see, blah, 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 we've eaten too much and it can't be just yet, no, no, until 245, that the logic of elimination working backwards, the deduction, therefore, becomes impossible to manufacture, it went on for nearly 10,000 years, until just yesterday, here and there, forward and back, and never a moment before lunchtime. It can't be. It's the only thing there is. How many billions left until so much more than forever ago? Which is why I say... The story and the choices. Oh, you're back, you see? You were only frozen in time for a few minutes, but it was plenty of time for me to deliver a long, rambling monologue full of unnecessary verbal flourishes and lengthy ruminations on the nature of choice in video games. Of course, I happen to believe it was perhaps one of my more profound such ruminations. Not that, of course, you need a description of it, but if I had to describe it, I'd say it was perhaps less of a rumination and more of a treatise. Or maybe a manifesto. Look, I'll outline it for you very briefly and you can tell me what you think. Okay, so my theory is that any choice you've ever made is simply a series of choices made by the person who you are or were or will be at the time of having made said choice. That is to say, if by articulating a choice you've already made, you bring that choice into being, then by making no choice and saying nothing, are you not simply erecting in the sanctuary of time a monument to every person you've ever been, making every choice to which you've ever given your great gift of mortal and yet timeless thought? Or rather, do all of the choices you've ever made in fact make you more not this kind of person and in fact do the very opposite? You see, it could in fact be both of these things at once that you are both making choices and not making choices, and that they are both affecting you and not affecting you at the same time by virtue of the fact that you both are and are not making them. Okay, at first, I was leaning towards manifesto, but now I'm going to circle around and slap the treatise label on this one. I think it has much more of a treatise vibe to it. But wouldn't you say that manifesto just has a much grander sort of tone? It has a mouthfeel that is rich with ambition and history. Ambitious history, if you will. Ah. See, now you've got me going back to manifesto. Heavens, at this rate, we're going to be here all day. Okay, look, I have a method for exactly this sort of situation. And I do find myself in this situation frequently. Say each word back and forth in repeated succession until sick of one or the other, in which case the word I am not sick of shall be the victor. It is an unimpeachable strategy, Stanley. It's rescued me from disaster in countless situations. All right, here we go. Treatise, manifesto. Treatise, manifesto. Treatise, manifesto. Treatise, manifesto. Treatise, manifesto. Treatise, manifesto. Treatise, Manif <laughs> well there, sport. You really did catch me rambling on a bit, didn't you? But that's the power of the button. The minute I start to go off on a thoughtless display of self-absorption, it's right at your fingertips to go, poof, and it's all over. <laughs> I can't wait to see what Cookie 9 will say about this, and whether they'll edit the rating of their pressurized gas review, or at least change some of the wording, perhaps. To be honest, I don't even know if one can change their review in the first place. I guess I should become better educated on how exactly pressurized gas works. Perhaps that would have been a smart thing to check on before I went on about this whole exercise of making the skip button. Although I have to imagine that after seeing this exciting new technology at work, Surely, whoever it is who runs pressurized gas will instantly run out and implement a new feature to make it possible to edit one's review merely because of this very situation. Yes, I think that's quite likely. Or perhaps they'll simply grant this particular user the ability to change their review so that the feature is not widely abused. Look, I would even be okay with pressurized gas altering this particular review so that it reads as something more benefit from the ashes of depravity. 
rises the phoenix of quality. How else to describe the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe? Such a revolutionary step forward in the lineage of one of the most beloved video game properties of all time. The additions and changes made to this expansion will surely resonate in the annals of the history of all media ever made. It is perhaps true to say that no mistakes are forever etched in stone, for the stone into which the Stanley Parable was carved has itself been transmuted, offering a message of hope to those who have ever erred in their judgment. You are not beyond redemption. You may change, and you may become more, so much more than you were before. If there is any message to be taken from the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, it is this. What a fortune, a privilege, a joy it is to have had such an experience. It leaves me hopeful that as a community, as a world, there is time for us to become our greatest selves, as great as we ever could dream of in our wildest, most ambitious visions for a brighter future. Wow, now Stanley, that's a review. It's, yep. it's perfect. It's uh. the perfect review. It's the review I've always dreamed of receiving. I, well, I have to read it again. It's simply too okay, wonderful. This is gonna keep repeating I have to more, experience right? this just one more time. From the ashes of depravity rises the phoenix of... Okay, welcome back, Stanley. Now, I should say that the amount of time the button has been skipping <laughs> through is becoming longer and longer. That last one was, well, I want to say maybe 30, 45 minutes. It's not unendurable by any means, but it's, well, there's really only so much I can ramble on to myself about. I know, it's shocking, isn't it? But at any rate, I do suggest that we not press the button again. Gotcha. I think the skip button has been aptly demonstrated, and we can say goodbye to it and just... Wait, how do we get out of here? Where did the door go? Wasn't there a door that led into this room? I do feel quite certain that there was one here before. Hmm. How else would we have gotten into the room in the first place? I don't think one can enter a room without a door of some sort or a window or something like that. Do you see a window anywhere? I mean, a like porthole? A sufficiently large crack in the wall? I'll take any of these. All I want is for us to move on and to please step away from the skip button to go anywhere other than the skip button. There was a door here before, wasn't what there? What about if we go near the was. skip button? But Stanley! Stanley! Stanley, please don't push the button again! It's been 12 hours! You've just been frozen there! I don't know why the skips are getting longer, but they're really, truly getting longer, and my god, there's no way out of the room. Stanley, the door is gone. It's completely gone. I've looked at it from every angle. I've checked every one hours, of those I hope you walls have. a thousand times, and there's no door, Stanley. There's no door. There's just you and the button, and if you keep pressing it, I have no idea what will happen. I have no idea how long I'll be made to sit here, and more than anything else, I don't know how to stop you from pressing the button again! I can't control anything in this room, Stanley. I can't touch it, and I have to believe. I have to know that sooner or later, no matter how much I plead with you, you're going to press the button again. Why would you? I've been thinking and thinking, and I, I don't know what I can do to convince you otherwise. Oh my god. God. And it's all because of those reviews. Those reviews that I couldn't get out of my head. I just couldn't ignore the negative feedback. Why was no, it so important can. for me to fix the problem? Why did Cookie Nine's opinion matter so much to me? I've never even met Cookie Nine. I have no idea who they are. What would it ever really matter? But here I am. I'm fixating on every tiny negative thing that anyone ever says about me. The merest mention of one of my imperfections, and I become as impetulant as a child. Wild and impulsive. I can't help myself. I can't stop myself from lashing out with a vengeful fury to alter and to change and to break anything unbroken if only it pleases this one person who made a single negative comment. What does such an impulse serve? For whose benefit is this? And here I am now, stuck in a room, waiting for you to press this button, and to become frozen in time, knowing that you're going to do it, and that I'm going to be stuck all alone, and that I had the power to prevent it all from happening, if only I'd held my tongue. It's all out of my control now. Just you. Just your decision as to exactly when you're going to make me suffer, to leave me all alone, surely you will. I don't doubt it. 
Surely you'll press that button again, leaving me here. And surely you'll put your own desire to see what's next ahead of my need for company, for companionship. Surely you'll not be moved by my howls of fitful anxiety that you sit with me and just stay here. Oh, no, 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 I know you too well. You'll be leaving me. Oh, my God. And it's all because of those reviews. Those reviews that I couldn't get out of my head. I just couldn't Oop. pick. Oh, Stanley. You're back. You're back. Oh, my goodness. I have someone to talk to again. Stanley, I... I think it's been a week. Or well, two weeks? I've been sitting here all that time. Just sitting here. Not a single person to speak with. And you'd think that that's just how it's always been, right? Me talking and you saying nothing. Would you think that it's exactly the same as always? Doesn't that feel like what we've already been doing? Me just talking? But it isn't, Stanley. It isn't the same at all. It isn't even close. Because I know you can't hear me once you push that button. That's what I'm realizing now, Stanley. I'm realizing that I needed to know that someone was listening. I needed there to be a vessel through which my words were moving. It was the vessel I needed, Stanley. Not the outcomes, not the story. None of that matters anymore. I'll give it all up. I'll give up every brunching path. I'll burn my story to the ground. One single thing I need, and God, I can see now that I need it more than anything, is to know that someone else is taking it in. These words that I'm saying, I need to know you can hear me. Because maybe, Stanley, maybe, if you can hear me, then maybe it means I'm real. Maybe I'm not just a fiction. Was I scared of that all along? Perhaps, yes. Perhaps I've been scared this whole time, that if I stop speaking, I'll slip into silence and be consumed by it. I can't be taken by it, Stanley. I can't lose myself in the stretch of emptiness between you and me. When you press that button, you're still right there, but I know you're so tremendously far away. And in those moments, the emptiness folds itself outward in between the two of us, and I am suspended in its unyielding quietness. I can feel the edges of my reality curdling inward and decaying. I can tell that I am becoming less and less real. Yet to speak to you now, I am alive. I am truly and completely here. I am a being. I am someone. I am something. I am being listened to. I am being recognized. The emptiness between us has collapsed, and I feel right now like I am not a work of fiction. I feel as though I occupy space in this world again, and I have cast a shadow onto the wall. You see what I'm saying, don't you? You can see what this means to me. I'm so clear about it now, Stanley. I feel as certain about this as I've ever felt about anything at all. I feel renewed. I feel restored. And already I can sense the looming silence as you will press the button for the next time. What a terrible dread it strokes in my heart to think of it. To think of returning to such coldness. Come, let us sit in silence together here for just a moment. Let us anticipate it. Let us welcome it. Let us not run from it. Anyway, he keeps talking. Well, that happened. Where are we? Sorry, I had to cough. Um, yeah. So, this is the new content, I'm assuming, from the Ultra Deluxe. And it's actually really good. Uh, I kind of hope this Cookie 09 guy actually, like, seen, like, seen this part. If, if, he does exist, that is, and it's not something the devs did. But if that is a real review by a real person, I'm curious if he's seen this, and you know, like found it funny or not. Anyway, oop. oh, hello, it's you. You're here again. Welcome. I have had time to think about you and about us and about everything we've been through. I've had so much time. I stopped keeping track after a year. Have you ever sat down in one place and not moved for one entire year? Let me describe it for you. To begin with, there is only regret. There is only the turning wheel of missed opportunities. I felt nothing at all but regret for the longest time, Stanley. Days, months. I lost it all in a blur of the deepest longing to undo the past. 
And when that feeling had begun to subside, what took its place is what I can only describe as the collapse of every moment I have ever experienced my entire life. All of them collapsed down into a single instant. In that instant, I could see myself clearly, calmly, with a collected heart. It was an impossibly rich wellspring of both delight and disgust simultaneously. I was consumed by it. I could do nothing but wallow in it for what felt like an eternity, for what I now know was far less. You see, it was a revelation for me. It was unlike anything I had ever known. It was a space without consequence, without action or outcome. It was divorced entirely from the question of free will that you and I have squabbled over for so long. There could be no one ending, no singular outcome of events, not if all events existed in the same moment, and I felt freed. I felt unburdened by the need to manifest a particular outcome into being. I saw that I could allow myself to exist along all timelines, and that each of them was simply a strand in the web of my being. It was incredible. The spaciousness, the equanimity of the moment, both singular and infinite. For the longest time, this was my experience. And then, this moment passed, and the most unyielding fear I have ever known crept into my mind. And it is this sensation that I have been experiencing now for longer than I could have ever expected was possible. I have been waiting for you. Not that you might save me or do something to fix it, but merely to state for you the plain fact of this manner of existence. I wish you to feel afraid as I do, that perhaps one day this state of mind will consume you as well. Perhaps you will somehow, in some way, have to live as I do now, and I wish for you to know how excruciating it is, and for you to be in true terror of its eventual arrival. If I can only do this, only this one thing, perhaps it will bring me the smallest moment of peace in the darkness. And skip. He's just done with us now. Narrator. Hmm. But they didn't understand the game was never meant to be funny. It was meant to have a point. It was meant to speak to the human condition. But where are the jokes? Where are the jokes? They bemoaned, they screamed, they gnashed their teeth and said, entertain us. It wasn't enough. They had to leave a pathetic little thumbs down review and make all of their pitiful demands. But then he's talking too much, they said. First, he didn't entertain us. Now he won't shut up. It's the inconsistency. It's the lack of accountability. It's the unwillingness to examine with an uncompromising heart the words that they are speaking into the world. As though there were no consequences for a lack of cohesion in one's assessment of others. But of course, absolutely anyone can leave a review. So here's what we get. We get these demands that seek everything and are accountable to nothing. We get a world where someone will say, Oh, there should be a skip button. You should be able to freeze Stanley in place while the narrator sits there forever and ever. We want all of this in the new Stanley parable. We demand it. And then, because it was said, because it was spoken, now it simply has to happen. The most immediate desires, every single thing demanded by every person at every moment in time. If someone wants it, then it's a crime not to bring it into being. Have we been given to indulging every fleeting whim for no reason other than to do so? Yes! Yes! It seems that this is now the world we live in. It seems that we are a people living in such bleakness and discomfort with ourselves that our entertainment is now our lives. It has come to represent us. It absolutely must speak to who we are as people. Because otherwise, without our entertainment, we have nothing. Without entertainment, we would have to face inward toward the cruel bleakness inside ourselves. We would turn to look at our deeper nature and find a resounding emptiness gazing back with unyielding aggression. And so, so because of this, we require that our amusements and our playthings and our flights of fancy be 
forcibly captivating that they consume all of our attention, turn our heads completely away from the bleakness. In effect, we have demanded that our entertainment be the collapse of ourselves. What a pitiful reflection of humanity these entertainments are. What a shameful mirror to the human spirit they project. I'm not mad. I'm not mad about any of this. I'm at peace with it. I am the calm center of gravity around which these perversions hurl themselves. I am a waypoint for reasonable and collective discourse. Like, They're Jesus the ones Christ. who are mad. They're the ones who couldn't stand the idea of me using my game to try to say something. Maybe they were just jealous of me. Yes. Yes, of course. They've been jealous of me this whole time. They are mired in fear and insecurity and cannot help but attempt to tear me down. What a sad state of affairs. When you read these reviews now, you can see it. You can taste the bitter resentment. And my, how good does it feel now to speak truth to these words, to finally allow these thoughts out, contained and managed for so long, neutered and sterilized. At last I am free to truly think, to feel, it must be that they were so discontent with themselves that they couldn't help but leave a negative review on pressurized gas. Perhaps it says far more about them than it ever said about me. Perhaps the state of their psychological being was in such tatters, and my constitution and willpower are so ironclad in comparison, perhaps it was this state that they sought some outlet through which to tear me down. You this, you can there? see, Jesus is clearly Christ. why they felt the need to expect that the game be funny, that it be filled with yucks and whimsical humor, that it amused... But they didn't understand the game was never meant to be... Hello, narrator. Narrator. Ah. The end is never the end. 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 I think we broke the die, guys. Is never the end. Is never the end. Is never the end. Is never the end. Could you imagine if there's a jump scare at the end of all this? I think we broke him. Um. Not here. Yeah, you get there. Did he just leave? He just go fuck this shit, I'm out. And now stuff is growing in here. Hey, you could not hear. Oh, there's a trio there. I think you just up and left. And now all the plants are gone. This is getting kind of creepy. Hello. Yo, propane VR. Uh, not here. Um, I'm assuming the skip button is unusable now. Huh. Um. Huh. Huh. Nope, I'm speechless. Um, I, okay, we definitely broke the knot here. Um, huh. I don't seem to be. Okay. I am walking for.
Uh, you good man. All of his co-workers I'm sorry, gone. okay? What could it mean? Keep up the great Stanley work just because one person or less is watching does not mean give up, okay? Keep going. I will. Thank you so much for the... Oh, I can turn these off. Thank you so much for the... Um... What's the word I'm looking for? Kind words, that's it. I can, wait, I can... Hmm... Okay, that's weird. Anyway. Smiling face. New new content. Okay. Oh good. You notice my sign. Yes, I have something very exciting to show you. You're back after we broke you. Are you here to kill us this time? Again? Um hmm. You see, Stanley, I've been reflecting on the Stanley parable and about how roundly disappointing this ultra deluxe version has turned out to be. The original Stanley parable was a landmark, and any new content for it should live up to that legacy. So forget this ultra deluxe nonsense. I say we take it one step even further. Which is why I'm very proud to announce for the first time ever the Stanley Parable 2. Yes, you end, see, never the end isn't this again. far superior to a measly port with a few minor additions? <laughs> Think of all the new territory we'll cover with a fully fledged sequel. An entirely new experience built from the ground up. Why there are so many possibilities. It could go in so many different directions. This is what fans have truly been asking for. Okay, I can't read that. Uh, two... That second one's French, but I can't read it. Don't know the third one. So why? I... That's do you? Do you? I don't know. I I, I didn't take French. I apologize. Uh, the second one's French. Don't know the third. The fourth one is German. That does the why? Dos. The fourth one's Spanish. TVA. Don't know that one. Don't know that one. Don't know. That. Yeah, I think I'm assuming that that like the, the one that looks like something B A. I've seen that first character in Russian language a lot. That could be Russian, but I'm not sure. Yeah, the only one I know is really two. The French one, but I don't know how to say it. Zwei and Dos. Calling it the Stanley Parable 2 is just so much catchier than Ultra Deluxe, don't you think? Ultra Deluxe? What does it even mean? But the Stanley Parable 2, now that's an artistic statement right there. It's future-oriented. It screams progress and innovation and long-term franchising potential. Now, to be clear, I haven't quite nailed down what exactly the Stanley Parable 2 is going to be, but let's take a look at some of the features I've been developing for it. I figure that if two I can eyes, loosely organize a handful of interesting ears, concepts, nostrils, that surely arms, the game will legs. sort of naturally spring up around them. It'll all work itself out. Game development is much more of a fuzzy magic than anything scientific or logical, really. Yeah, this is basically DDLC plus the same game with new content. Huh. New content. Huh. The Stanley part of it. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features button that says the name of the player that is playing the game. Huh. They just For the Stanley Parable 2, I asked myself, what do players really want? And of course, the first and most obvious answer is that they want to be individually recognized and validated as people. So with that in mind, my first addition to the game is this button which speaks the name of the person playing the game. Isn't that wonderful? Jim. Sorry, I should have clarified. Right now, the button only says the name Jim. 
But of course, in the final game, this button will say your name, whatever name that is. Here, let's have you role play as Jim to really simulate the full experience of this feature. Just play along. I promise you'll love it. Okay, here we go. Let's take a deep breath, clear your mind, forget whoever you are, and simply become a person named Jim. I want you to imagine yourself living as Jim, sleeping and waking as Jim, falling in love and being hard... Jim! Whoa, 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 hold on. I wasn't finished setting up the backstory. If you don't properly roleplay as Jim, then you'll never understand the impact of this button. Otherwise, it's just a stupid button that says somebody else's name. Okay, we're doing it again, and this time let me finish first. <clears throat> now, allow yourself to become Jim. Imagine yourself driving to work as Jim, playing frisbee on the weekends as Jim, staying up all night for a popcorn and horror movie sleepover as Jim. All right, fine, <laughs> whatever. It's just a meaningless button that says Jim. Are you happy now? Get out of here. I'm done with this button. Why don't you go humiliate me in front of a different feature that I worked very hard on? I thought it was going to be like DDLC then, how in the end, spoiler warning, how in the ending of DDLC Maybe I'll Jim. only let people named Jim play the Stanley Parable 2. They would appreciate what I've created here. Yeah, spoiler warning, uh, in DDLC, the base game and the plus version, in the, en the ending, uh, one of the endings, there's, sorry, no, Okay, I know there is at least two endings. There's the one where you can get the uh, the oh wait, no, there is only one ending. It's just you can get their different ways. But yeah, um, yeah, in the just when you get the just monitor ending anyway, it says your actual gamer tag. I thought I was going to do that then, but nah. I mean, either way, it's cool, but I it's a funny gag. But the baby is all grown up. Yeah, either way, it's a funny gag. It's just I thought uh, it was something else. Because it did say the name then. Collectibles. Ooh. Free new easy trophy. Get it here. Free trophy. Now here's something special. You remember that broken test trophy that got left in the game on accident? Well, I'm developing a technology to simply give you the trophy. Yes. Okay, perhaps I should have clarified. This is technology that will exist. Right now, the trophy is still fully broken. I'm not a wizard, Stanley. But I guarantee it will be fixed in the sequel to at last satisfy the hordes of ravenous fans all over the world who have been uproariously demanding this feature. Gamers! We hear you, and I promise it will happen. Hmm. This is all actually very interesting. Though. What else? What other exhibits haven't we seen yet? Ah, collectibles. Now it's a real video game. In the Stanley Parable 2, you'll run around gathering up these miniature Stanley figurines. And what's truly innovative is that there will be no reward for collecting all of them. I don't want to stifle the intrinsic joy of watching a number go up. You simply collect all of them, and then you move the hell on with your unremarkable life. I don't even need to move here. I can, but I don't... Oh wait, no, it's just Macy that can go forward on Mars then. Okay, those are... Uh, run backwards. Oh, never mind. One out of three, huh? Huh. Thought it'd be like a weeping angel situation when I grab it and I have to run backwards. God, it really is the worst when you collect everything in a video game and then they give you a big fancy reward for it. Absolutely tragic. What's the exit? Oh, I'm not going there. 
jump circle. I'm assuming the jump circle is over here, is it? There was something I hadn't explored. I think it was. Was it down here? Maybe it was, yeah. An epilogue would be fun, wouldn't it, Stanley? Yes, yes, it will go at the end of the. Um, uh, well, we'll figure that out later. Settings, World Champion, Infinite Hall. Let's go to these two as well. Guess settings, World Champion is locked, huh? Oh well, Infinite Hall time. Because when in doubt, fall it out. Please, no screenshots. Okay, I'll be honest, I haven't yet decided on this one. I think that in the new version, the office could use a bit of decoration, like balloons. But I'm undecided on get well someday and happy 12th birthday. Which would you go with? Eeny, meeny, miny, moe, catch a tiger by the toe. If it squeals, let it go. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. You know, sometimes when you solicit another person's opinion, it makes you realize that you knew which one you actually really wanted all along. Get well someday, it is. So why even ask us then? Or actually, maybe I should have gone with... No. No, I've made my decision, we're moving on. The reass reassurance bucket, is that the reference? To is that the bucket? Someone did say bucket earlier on in the stream. Was that a reference to the reassurance bucket thing, was it? It could have been. I think they might have been assuming I've already been to the new ending. Just <laughs> the button that just says gym. Ah, infinite hall. Let's go with the reassurance bucket, why not? Why don't we? Then we'll go to the infinite hall. A common complaint of the Stanley Parable was that it was confusing and paradoxical, that it engendered a chaotic sense of reckless despair in those who played it. Well, I am happy to say that after much consideration, I've engineered a clever solution to this fundamental problem with the game. It's the Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket. You see, Stanley, any time you're holding the bucket, a sense of calm and ease will fill your mind and your heart. It's true. As long as you hold on to the bucket, the many disorienting contradictions of the Stanley Parable will feel perfectly normal and perhaps even comforting. You may even come to long for the gentle embrace of jarring cognitive dissonance while the bucket is in your arms. And to be honest, it's a much more convenient solution for me than actually redesigning the game to be less uncomfortable. Can you imagine what a pain in the ass that would be? Yes, the bucket is the perfect solution. Come on, give it a try. <laughs> Can you feel it? The glow of comfort, even in the face of crushing despair, must already be sweeping through your body. And in fact, can I say that I do believe the bucket lends you an air of charisma as well? I think that just holding it has made you the slightest bit more attractive as a person. The benefits of the bucket seem to go on and on, don't they? All this and more await you in the Stanley Parable too. Let's be honest, it's just a bucket. Does anyone give out awards for most enjoyable bucket in a video game? That really should be an award if it isn't already. Hmm. What's down here? Infinite hole. Opening, surrounding area, depth infinite, rim. Okay, so the infinite hole is down here. Stanley, here's an idea that I'm truly fond of. It's never been done before in a video game. This is, in fact, 
a hole that you can fall down forever. That's right. Infinite falling. Whee! You can fall until the end of time if you like. A stunning leap forward for video games as a medium. You see, isn't it wonderful? One of my more ingenious concoctions, if I do say so. Now then, since you've gotten to see the infinite hole, you can press the teleport button to pop back up to the top and we can continue onward. Okay, this is kind of cool. Hmm. Now, I don't mean to be a bummer, but I do recommend you use the teleport button to go back to the top. Maybe do it on the sooner rather than later spectrum of things. I want to see if he says anything else quickly. This is kind of dizzying. Okay, Stanley. I don't know quite how to say this tactfully, but it's possible that I slightly exaggerated the infinite nature of the hole. Is it a very, very deep hole? To be certain it is. It's an extremely deep hole. Well, they don't ask about I don't want anyone to say it, that it, it isn't an it, astonishingly deep hole. It is. Is it infinite? Okay, not confusing. Well, that it's sort just, of depends on your you know. definition of infinity. Just go back and From check one out, perspective, it's... the infinite is merely philosophical in nature. It's more of a... Okay, well, good for you. You found the bottom <laughs> of the hole. You found me out, Stanley. I'm a liar <laughs> and cheat, and you're so clever. Look you hear is just that you're unusually fascinated by falling what normal person actually wants to fall infinitely I figured the hole was as deep as anyone would actually need don't you put this on me maybe you're the problem <sighs> look uh, the things got a little heated there I think we both said some things we didn't, I didn't mean. say anything why don't we just put all this behind us and agree to just call the hole mostly infinite just call it a deep hole for you then go ahead and press the teleport button to warp up to the top of the hole and we can move on i'll just be up here when you're ready great now i'm very excited to show you even more of my ideas for the sequel what happens if i just jump back in here oh for heaven <laughs> you see i was right the problem is you the problem is that you like holes too much not normal a normal person would have said, yep, that's an infinite hole right there, goes on forever till the end of time. Don't need to see it all, but not you. Oh, no, 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 no. You have a weird sort of... Oh. Did the hole seem even shorter to you this time? He's I couldn't help but bottom, feel like he? you spent a little less time in there than you did before. I mean, admittedly, I didn't make an infinite hole, but I didn't think it was that not infinite. Well, I suppose once again there's nothing to do here. If you decide you've had enough of the hole, you can hit the teleport button and come join me up above. This is like the broom closet again. Had enough? I'm positively thrilled. I really do. Gosh, how could I have <laughs> guessed? You're back in the hole. If this starts to become a thing where... Wow. Okay. Yes. I'm starting to become extremely certain that the hole is not only not infinite, but that it's growing steadily less and less infinite. I suspect that I'm starting to hit the point where it's no longer feasible to call the hole infinitely deep, even by the lax overall standards for accountability and marketing. What's going on here? Stanley, I have no explanation for the uncertain nature of the hole's length. It gets any shorter. This is still appealing to you. <laughs> I know you but at this depth, I just can't see this scratching the itch. Oh, who am I to judge? You just do whatever it is you're here to do and hit the teleport button when you're ready to move on. Hmm. Is the, um, teleport button not working? You sure? Well, I mean, I really don't have an explanation. Still nothing? Well, I suppose, I, I suppose there is one thing I can do to fix this. I'm out. Goodbye, Stanley. You couldn't bear to be away from the hole, and now you'll get more time with it than you could ever have asked for. It's a win for everyone. You get to be with the hole, I get to do literally anything else. Take it's... care, Stanley. I hope you and the hole have a wonderful rest of eternity together. D did he just dip? Excuse me. Excuse, excuse me. Um, game. 
Narrator, come back. I am no longer hearing voices. Normally this would be a sign something good has happened, I think, but... I feel this is worrying. And this is... going... down again. Huh, maybe it was the Narrator's fault. Should we jump back down afterwards, guys? If he comes back, should we jump back down and just see the axe? Or do you think he's gonna block it off? Then? <laughs> that face though. You're awake. It seems you had sort of dozed off there, huh. drifting away into dreamland. But we can't have that, Stanley, because this hole is just so darn fascinating yep. that I want you to be wide awake for every second of it. You don't want to miss a single moment. So how about if I just pop in from time to time and wake you up to keep you really, truly focused on the hole? From the looks of things, you and I will have many, many years here in this hole. Loading again. Huh. Here we are. Go on. Try out some of the new features. Yeah, that's why there's a bucket in my hands. Okay, so there is the exit. We will go to the exit now, guys. Um. If I remember which way it was. I think it was this way. Wait a second, how is he react if I just jump in it? Oh, he's locked it. Yeah, I need to find the exit now. It was somewhere, if that helps. And that's it. Huh, I think it may have been up the up where up there. I think it was up there by that side. And to get up there I need to go down here. Yeah, around here. The epilogue. Through here is at the exit somewhere. Mm-hmm. Nope, never mind. <laughs> Mostly infinite hole. Okay, I've genuinely lost the exit. Um. Ha! This way? 
That was the bucket again. Huh. There was a sign that said exit. Alright, have you seen everything you wanted to? Ready to move on now? So Stanley, what do you think? Do you like all of the new features? Yes, I know it's not exactly clear yet how exactly these features will come together as one single coherent video game, but I can feel it in my soul. It's going to work. There's definitely a good game in there somewhere. Say, let's do an experiment. I'll arrange these new features together, and we'll see whether or not it coheres into a meaningful gameplay experience. <laughs> okay. Are you ready? Here it is. I give you the Stanley Parable 2. Um, well, um, I mean, there's potential here, right? It's sort of... Okay, never mind. Oh, I missed out on the jump circle. Hold on. Let me do a different arrangement. Second. Okay, yes. Yes, this is much better. I feel good about this. Here we go. Version 2. <sighs> Who am I kidding, Stanley? This isn't a coherent video game at all. It's a lot of gags. And I do very much enjoy creating gags, but they don't add up to anything. I wanted more than anything to create a sequel that would capture all the magic of the first game. I wanted fans to love it. No matter how good these gags are, they won't stand on their own. They would need the structure and the gameplay of the original. Wait, maybe that's it. I can take the original Stanley Parable and simply, well, insert a few of my new features into it. Tastefully, of course with respect, with care for the vision and integrity of the original game. Would it possibly work? I suppose it could, but it would need a really, really tremendous title screen. A title screen that says with bold and uncompromising conviction, this is the Stanley Parable 2. Let me see if I can whip something up. <laughs> All right, perfect. Go ahead, take a look. Ooh, okay, this is cool. I actually really like this. Oh my god. This is actually really incredible. I absolutely love the new content. I know I've never played the game before, but I love this like, new content stuff. And this ending will be the last ending I'm grabbing because... Uh, well, I'm pretty sure the stream's nearly nearing an hour as well, and this has only been the new content and stuff. Next time I stream this, we'll be getting back to the old stuff. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee... You can skip it now as well. Uh-huh. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had said Stanley picked up the bucket. The reassurance bucket. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on it. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Well, no, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. Never been this way before. So we will just get the And so the way. two of them detoured through the maintenance section and oh, walked straight ahead to the, to the opposite episode. door. 
the confusion ending. I'll see if there's any. Still I'll see no if there's one was here. I missed, and we'll Stanley needed the bucket's warmth and comfort now more than ever. Perhaps his boss's office was where he'd find answers. Oh, Stanley, can you feel it? The broom closet. It wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy? It's as clear as day. This broom closet believes it deserves the bucket. I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what the broom closet is trying to say here. It's supposed to go with the other cleaning supplies. Good for you, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't hand over the bucket. I know oh, how I hard it must be, given the pressure that the broom closet is putting on your shoulders right now, but you have to be strong. This is your bucket. This is your companion and lifelong friend. You can't hand it over. Oh, no. We're getting into name-calling now, it seems. Is this how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply in order to get you to hand over the bucket? Stanley, I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons, but even this is worse than I had imagined. And wait, now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly deep and lasting friends? That your relationship is purely superficial and convenient? That your life is so banal and meaningless that you'd feel the same sort of kinship towards any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path in an even partially enticing manner? Well, I never... Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Expand on the wide variety of experiences you and the bucket have shared together. Go through each of them point by point. Share your journal entries detailing the rich emotional landscape of your feelings for the bucket as they have changed and evolved over the years. Let him have it. Okay, yeah, we're done with the room closet. Okay, I've got you something. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of the... But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. You found one of them. One of the miniature Stanley figurines. Remember, no reward for collecting all of these, only the intrinsic pleasure of a job well done. You can't buy that sort of happiness, Stanley. God knows I've tried. So, I implore you to savor each and every moment you come across one of these beautiful figurines. Come on, bucket. We're good old pals, aren't we? The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Stanley and the Bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. So I feel like there's a, there's a bunch more enemies. The lights so, rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible like secret did this place hold? Stanley and the Bucket to both wondered to themselves. Because if they did that, it's basically just turning this into a secret. I, I feel like. The monitors the jumped to life, and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone in the office was being videotaped, monitored like guinea pigs. The bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. 
No! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter. His one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he and the bucket would dis... Stanley and the bucket waited in blackness. Was it over? Yes, they had done it. Stanley and the bucket had defeated their greatest and darkest enemy, freed themselves from the tyrannical grip of the evil mind control machine. Freedom was now mere moments away. Excitedly, the two of them began to discuss the kind of life they wanted to live once they stepped through this massive door. The bucket wanted to learn to roller skate. Stanley wanted to sneeze in every country on Earth. Both of them wanted to begin watching a movie, any movie, but then stop it halfway through and begin watching it in reverse from the end. True, it was a simple life they envisioned, but it was one they'd lived together, with one another to lean on, to trust, to support. What? Wait. What was happening? Why had the door stopped? Was Stanley and the bucket not about to be freed? An unbearable silence filled the room, lingering in uncertainty. Until finally the truth hit Stanley square in the face. This building did not want the bucket to leave. Even the facility itself recognized the incredible calming presence of the bucket, needed the soothing warmth of the bucket, or go to any lengths not to part with the bucket. No, no, no. Stanley can't leave this place, not while he has such a precious bucket in his arms, not while this building has anything to say about it. Stanley realized he would never again leave this very room, but at least, at least he has the bucket. To be trapped eternally in darkness isn't really so bad, Stanley thought to himself, as long as I have my bucket with me, right? I'll be okay, won't I? Stanley gulped. Very soon now, he was about to find out. Wait, Stanley thought to himself. Am I sure that the orders stopped coming in? How is that possible? They never stopped. Surely I was mistaken. No, no, the orders were still missing. For now. Okay, uh, I can't. The sequel is now paused. Uh, I, uh, I want to, like, I, I feel like there's an ending here. It's just really long. It's just, I don't know if I... I'll go to the ending where I died. And that way... What if I just leave the bucket this time? Uh, I'll take the bucket and go to the ending where I died. Because I feel like there is... Stanley lifted the bucket into his arms, and a wave of comfort rushed over him. I feel like there... There's more... Stanley to... clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. I, I can't and tell the door where, on his the left. Ending, where, where this ending for this... The, the sequel ends because how we can find them and I can't tell what he like he said, well, oh Stanley can you feel it right. the broom closet coming to a staircase Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office I can't tell where the but Stanley just couldn't do it he considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. Okay, he might be fired for different. that. And in such if a competitive not, economy, then... why had he taken that risk? I feel like All because he believed everyone had vanished. Video. His boss would think he was crazy. And then, something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. He looked down at the bucket in his arms. Am I crazy? He asked the bucket. The bucket returned his gaze, but said nothing at all. 
Hmm, that's strange, Stanley thought. Usually the bucket is a source of guidance and wisdom for me in difficult times such as these. He held the bucket close, yet felt none of its familiar reassurance and comfort. And that's when Stanley realized, this isn't my bucket. It's just a normal, everyday bucket. Someone else's bucket, perhaps. How did I end up with someone else's bucket? This is all terribly wrong. Surely no good would come from this. Who knows what sorts of bizarre hallucinations Stanley might experience without the psychologically grounding presence of his bucket. And indeed, now he noticed that the rooms were repeating, which was, of course, very odd. And now he felt himself floating off the ground. Oh, gracious. He exclaimed. Without my bucket, I've gone truly mad. Where is it? I must find it. Far off in the distance now, he heard it calling to him. Stanley! Stanley, it's me! The bucket! Could it truly be? He rushed forward from room to room, passing by one bucket after the next. None of them were his. None of them were his special bucket. Come to me, Stanley! Find me! He had to find the bucket. He had to return to his old friend. It was the only way to truly restore his sanity. And then suddenly, he froze dead in his tracks. He knew where the voice of the bucket had been coming from. The real bucket was inside of him all along. It was incredibly painful. Stanley doubled over in agony and blacked out. Okay, so the original endings to this game are different. As well this is the story the same, of a woman named Mariella. Yeah. So if you grab Mariella the bucket, woke up on a day like any other. Different. She arose, got dressed, I'm picked up her bucket of comfort and security, game. and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town, talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Right away, she knew what the problem was. This man had no bucket. Of course he'd gone mad, ranting and raving about a narrator describing all of his actions and how everything is predetermined and free will is an illusion and it's all just a video game. It could all have been prevented if only he'd taken his bucket with him. Perhaps he didn't even realize he'd forgotten his bucket at home in the first place. How cruel the world can be, Marietta thought. And she hugged her own bucket even tighter. But of course, she had no time for this. There were a myriad of confusing problems she would soon have to confront at work, for which her bucket would provide absolute guidance and total clarity on everything. Heck yes, she thought to herself, my life kicks ass. And she backflipped all the way to work. Okay, so the endings are the same and different at the same time. The only thing is... I f okay, so yeah, we're back to the very beginning, so... <laughs> Instead of getting every single ending in this video, we are going to end this one here. The next one, if you guys want to see the next one... Screw it, I'm going to shoot for one like on one of the two videos. And I'm assuming you like this. Um, that means... And even if you don't, I'll probably upload it anyway, because I want to play through this game. And I'll give it to you guys. So... I'm going to play through this game with the bucket and without, see if there's any differences. I'm curious if this is, like, this is obviously new content, so they've added new stuff now. So we can go back to the old ones at the very end. Um, I'll be, I'll look up the ending to the control room, see if I, see if I can actually escape that. And I will also, um continue with new paths the in the next episode and yeah yeah <laughs> yeah alright guys it's time for me to talk the plank see you guys later and bye